Yeah, and um, despite winning the court case, it's still an ongoing, um, an ongoing thing, which kind of led me into a bit of a new fight and a new, um, a new goal. If you like, because um, I've noticed this sort of thing is happening to too many fathers, uh, yeah. not just fathers. It seems mothers are in some circumstances not being granted the rights that they deserve, and children are being affected by it. And what I want to do long term is, uh, is use the publicity that the um, court case and um, issues surrounding my daughter has got to try and potentially uh, get the laws changed uh, one day or make it so this sort of thing can't happen so easy. Well, but, what is it exactly that is happening? Well, um, it's, it's very hard to go from the top, but if we're going to... So I, I, I've got a very, very good relationship with my daughter. I think everybody that knows me knows that that's uh, the biggest, the most important part of my life. Um, I've seen that, yeah. So, yeah, and obviously with the court case, it was very hard going from seeing her every single day to then two hours a week on a Sunday, I think it was, supervised, you know, by people oh, right. watching over you like you're some, you know, like, like you're some wrong and really, and it's, yeah. and it's hard. Like, but, um, it, it was very tricky because um, she was entitled to legal aid um, and had free representation, um, and I didn't. So I had to go to, oh, wow. the, went to the library, just took every book on family law I could, studied it, found out enough that, enough that I was able to... I knew that any accusations that were made against me were false, as well as the fact that I knew that I'd never done anything um, to warrant not being in my child's life. So it was just a case of highlighting to the judge the real scenario and keeping myself patient enough to deal with, um, deal with the issues that come in between. So. But yeah. How, how did it all begin? Was it a breakup and then? We was never really for actually oh, together. Uh, together. And, yeah. um, and again, I feel like that was part of the reason why she ended up falling pregnant in the first place. Because, mm. you know, some, sometimes women think if a man, if you're pregnant, if you get somebody pregnant, that you're, you're likely to stay with them. And um, yeah. I made it very clear from the get go, get -go that um, I was more than happy to be a father, but I was not going to expose my daughter to that sort of toxic environment, you know, and having a daughter, I think it's uh, very important to see um, that she's, uh, you're wiring her brain for life. And if she's uh, you know, subjected to all that sort of arguing in a toxic environment, then she's going to become desensitised to it and maybe make some mistakes when it comes to picking a partner herself like, later on in her life. You, know, you don't see abuse when it's uh, there because it's almost familiar. Yeah, I see. So, um, so yeah, I, I had to bite the bullet. I knew that there would be repercussions from that. Um, she told, she said to the judge that I can see my daughter when she turns 18 years old. Wow. And uh, she, she was only 18 months at the time. Um, yeah, it was... Uh, so where, where's that kind of toxicity or like her, her stopping you from seeing the child? Where's I think that? it's a generational thing. Um, yeah. You know, bad habits get passed down sometimes and I don't think there's been any... Um, she's never met her own father. Um, I think that was the same, um, the same scenario for her mother too. Um, I don't know the ins and outs completely, but yeah. it wasn't seen as seen. It wasn't seen as important, like to have a father there. And again, um, she drops out of education very young. She never went to secondary school, so she never really developed the social skills that most of us do in this time. So I just think mm. her judgment was very off. Didn't realise the benefits of having a father there that was going to be putting 100% into his child and there at any call she did she just didn't didn't understand how how most parents uh, how most mothers would give their right arm for someone that does that and it just become more about proving that she doesn't need a man to do it rather than all oh, right so yeah um I, and I think she thought that you know by making it difficult um that I would have got, given up eventually or I would have walked away from it um which for me, uh, that wasn't an option. You know, I lost my father quite young, just before I turned nine. And for me, being a dad is the only thing that's ever even slightly filled that void. Oh. Um, so I was never going to back down. I was never going to give up. And I'm still to this day going through absolute hell. Um, so when that court case initially started, um, there was a campaign of false, false allegations and wrongful arrests. Wow. You know, for example, there was a time that um, I texted her to say, because uh, say that she was um, the, the trains were delayed and I'm going to be about 15 minutes late bringing her home. Yeah. She told me I'm going to call the police and said you say you with me. I videoed the altercation. Wow. I videoed her saying this. I videoed myself turning up to the address and I videoed myself leaving. 
the police they will lock me up for 23 hours um this is on, on what charge on domestic assault which was then oh based on what she said based yeah. on what she said yeah. now the reason her reason for doing this is because when there's an allegation of violence um a, a woman will get free representation for the court case um and the, the stunt that she pulled, well, under advice from her legal team, was to take a non-molestation order, which was like a restraining order. It was one day after I applied for child access, she took a restraining order. Wow. So I had to, before I could even start the access case, I had to disprove all these allegations and get the non-molestation order thrown out. And that's what took two years. Um, and it was again, I, I was arrested so many times, uh, so many separate incidents, and every single time they say they know what she's doing, unfortunately, there's a protocol to follow. People don't want to lose their Christmas bonuses. And um, unfortunately with a man, sometimes it seems to be guilty until proven innocent. And mm. there, is a, there is a lot of scenarios where I think that is appropriate and that does need to happen because there are a lot of bad, bad people out there and there are a lot of women that fall victim to this kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> With, with that being said and the situation in hand, would you, would you say she's a good mother in general? I feel like she loves her daughter, our daughter. Yeah. But again, where she's, um, she's not developed the sort of social skills that, that most of us have and mm. just general life skills uh, that she, she tends to put my daughter in danger from not, for example, she has a very uh, abusive partner. Oh, right. The police have had to remove him several times from the address. Um, wow. All sorts of incidents have happened. Um, and it was me highlighting these incidents and showing the, the evidence to social services, which is what resulted in the recent, um, the recent problems. Again, I was arrested uh, several weeks ago, uh, mm. two and a half weeks ago, I think it was. No, it was about a month ago now. Yeah. Um, so I'm going a bit off sub subject now. No, that's right. But, um, yeah, I, I was arrested about a month ago, 26 or 27 days. Um, and this was straight immediately after I'd, um, I'd informed social services and welfare officers in our school. But just a, just a big catalogue of it have been incidents that have happened, things that have clearly put my daughter in danger. I'm not too sure how much I can go into detail I can go into with some of these because the cases are still pending. Okay. But the sort of stuff that as a father makes you sick and you know, you imagine the thought of your daughter being put in danger, generally to the point the police have had to remove a man mm. from the house because he was trying to attack you know, wow. a, a child and her mother. You know, they've had to barricade doors to protect themselves. Yeah. But what happened? Um, <laughs> he put a thing on his neck. He put a what? Hanging thing on his neck for being hanged up. Then mummy said no. Then he jumped up to help me. Then mummy said no. What, in front of you? Yep. Yeah. One day later, two days later, where it was, she's got him back living at the address again. I see you. And yeah. I only wanted a conversation with a man. Uh, you know, I knew that whether I liked it or not, it's gonna, she's going to probably have involved him in her life. And the best thing I could do was build some sort of relationship with him so we can communicate and I can understand what's causing these issues so that we can prevent it happening again. I like, had like you know, if, if he's having breakdowns like this, there's got to be a reason. How do we help you? How do we solve this? Um, no one wanted to talk to me. No one really wanted to resolve the issue, and too much attention was put into covering up his um, his mistakes and his um, his issues. That yeah, it just become a campaign of again getting me arrested and trying to disprove the credibility of anything I've said. In it, yeah. <laughs> Not great news. Um, basically, on the order, there's there's not a powerful arrest for this kind of situation. But there's still a court order. Huh? There's still a court order for contact. But usually on yeah. court orders, there will be specific beginning mm -hmm. where it says there's an arrestable offence to take out of the country. This is what I'm saying. When you register mm -hmm. the breach with the court, yeah, regardless, I mean, the surely they can attach this. a pair of arrests to the court order. Yeah, but what's this? For a continued breach. That's why we need to log it. You have to log it, and if it happens again on Saturday, keep logging it, and then that will build. So what you're telling me is it could potentially be months before I get a court thing sorted, before I get to see my child again, after she can snap her fingers and I'll get arrested and locked in a cell overnight every single time. But there's how many of these breaches has she done? And you're telling me I've just got to stand here and go home peacefully and not get to see my child again. It's just 
But this is the thing, I, I need to ask them. I ask yeah. if she'd be happy if she come down here just for 10, 20 minutes today, just so you do get to see her. She's just trying to keep some sort of control. No, she said no, because she said you can ask her. She didn't want to. Yeah, because they're brainwashing her. They, they probably are. And, they're and, brainwashing her. And, well, and the longer the, the longer this goes without me seeing her, the harder it's going to be to reverse all these lies that they're probably telling her. Mm. You know, it's, so yeah. you don't realise the damage this is going oh, to do by not. Yeah. yeah, it's not. It's not because we, we don't see it, and the situation in general is shit. Like you can tell you're doing everything you can. You're pushing for it as well. Mm. Yeah, we're not sure. what, what more? If you log it with the court, I, th I think what happens is after a couple of breaches that are logged with the court, they can attach a power of arrest yeah. to the, the order. High, yeah, the higher it keeps yeah. going up, mm. the more. Mm. You see them, see? So if it's locked with the court, they, can, they change the order, so a uh, power of arrest is attached to the order. And then that would be different. Still, they would be able to then, arrest her and bring what, her down. You don't know what sort of lies they'd have told her and how that would have affected she her by say, that point. You listen, don't know. You do know as well that um, it won't be that long and <laughs> you'll, uh, you'll want a break. Yeah. I'm yeah, and ironically, she's she, got another baby coming. She, well, she said on the paperwork that, that she don't want. Well, she said that she don't want me seeing her for the rest of the summer holidays, which is ironically just before she's about to give birth to her other child, and then she's mm. going to need a break. So, I mean, it's, it's just it's total. It's when as and when it suits her. Yeah. I, mean, it's I just don't think it's going to be long before you see her because of how it is. But you definitely need to log it with the court. Yeah, well, I'm going to. Obviously, obviously we'll, we'll put our paperwork it's on. It's going to have to be the same thing here. on Saturday. I'm going to have to turn up here again on Saturday. And obviously, it's yeah, and I said we're going to have to call the police so that there's a log of us of the breach. Yeah. 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 All right. But obviously, we'll Sorry. put paperwork on our ends when it does get to social work because they pick this up as well. The yeah. Guardian reports on. Yeah. Um, obviously, she is happy up there, but it is. I don't know if they're just staying there for the day, but obviously, it is quite cramped up there with the amount of people that are up there. Mm. Um, and they'll look at that as well. And then all you can do is do everything at your end, we'll do what we can our end. I mean, it's it's not just that, there's safeguarding that. issues as well here. The, 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 I've highlighted all these, these issues to social. This is why they're trying to keep me in the dark, because Lily tells me everything that's happening at home. I've got yeah. evidence of everything. Yeah. And the more they're keeping me in the dark, I can't protect her. I, I don't know well, what to do. Yeah. It's, it, there's so much to this that yeah. it's... And it's like, to be fair, it's, it feels like that people ain't going to do nothing until something bad happens to my daughter. And this is kind of... I'll be a bit... Well, you can understand that obviously we don't have any powers at the minute. Yeah, I know. Not ideal. I know, but all right. Well, they really you. did try. I oh, know. I appreciate you coming. Out. But they were saying, um, uh, yes, we will call you again, yeah. they just say that we've got a yeah, picture. Do you want a cab number for today? Yes, yes please. please. Social services um, have got all the evidence. They've had it for a long time, and it's been very hard to get a social worker to even sit down and um, uh, have a conversation about this, despite having the evidence. Um, there's been issues with the police. You know, when the police removed the partner from the address, um, mm. they never informed social services and they got a duty of care to, whenever they're, wow. they, whenever they're called to an address when a child's present, they got a duty of care to inform social services. And um, when I had informed social services about the incident, they had no, no, um, no revelation idea. of the incident. And wow. several other ones as well. So protocol hasn't been followed a lot of times. Uh, when you add up the, the amount of times running into the 20s that I've been arrested on false allegations despite having letters from judges clearly stating um, that she has a history of this, that she's not to be believed, that she's a fantasist. Word for, uh, I, I'm not, I can't recite word for word for the legal yeah. things, but it ripped her a new one, basically. And I thought that having this letter from the judge, having over 20, 20 to 30 uh, wrongful arrests with all the case, a case reports. Um, I, I would have thought that would have made me pretty immune when it comes to these allegations being made again. Yeah. But again, we've seen that she's able to call the police any time and they will come and arrest me, lock me up, ask questions after. And even when presented with the evidence, they don't seem to listen to it and keep me for the maximum amount of time, which is I understand that on the, the police are only seeing domestic assault and it comes into the category of, you know, they, they categorise people in there. You, you see that come up in your system, you're just going to think, yeah. oh, you must be, it's a woman beating scumbag. They're not looking yeah. into the fact of, oh, this has happened a lot of times. There's evidence that strongly suggests that this, this woman's lying, but that, again, they have the protocol to follow. And, um, and I'm, unfortunately, I'm being made to be locked up every single time. Wow, wow. So every, every time she throws out a false allegation, every she's time, calm. Every time and they arrest me. And you, you, you get arrested every I'm time? arrested, um, without right. foul. That she's never made an allegation I haven't been arrested for. What, what kind of allegations are these? It's always, um, he pushed me or... Oh, right. The most recent one, um, 
the one that I've just, uh, the balcony, the, the officer called me five minutes before I turned up here. Um, yeah. I, was on, I was on bail until next Tuesday, the 12th of September. Is that with the court order? Um, oh. No, this was a new, this was, oh, was a completely free. separate, okay, separate right, see, yeah. incident. So yeah. obviously I had a court order which protects the access. She's, yep. she's meant to um, adhere to the court order, otherwise she's meant, meant to be arrested. If um, I think it's legislation ever since 2008, every single child arrangement order is meant to contain the power of arrest or power of warning attached to it, which means mm -hmm. the police, uh, she can't be prosecuted on something if she hasn't had a warning first. Yeah. Now, uh, my, my child arrangement order is the only one um, in the world, it's the same, that doesn't contain the power of arrest or power of a warning attached. Wow. Now, that, th that was a mistake on the court's part, but because of this, it's left me with less rights than when I initially, than before I won the court case, because the live with order states that my daughter's meant to live with her. So the police will always arrest me and, bring her, and, and take my daughter if ever I'm, I'm not adhering to the court, uh, to the, uh, court order. Wow. But because there's no power of arrest attached to it, any time she breaches it, they can't warn her or arrest her. And because of that, I can't log the breach to get it back to court. And do, it, do you think that's intentional that they, they missed that? I think it's very the... intentional. Yeah. Um, again, this is where one of the issues of me not having a solicitor and representing myself during the court case uh, falls because... Yeah. Because that's uh, something they would have pushed for. Yeah, yeah. and it's more that the judge, all the paperwork had to be kind of sent to her solicitor and then forwarded to me. Mm -hmm. And there's always been pages missing out of things. Uh, during the, the, during, when the court cases were happening, one of the tactics they would do is not email me the, the, uh, the court date until the night before. So chances wow. are I wouldn't see it. And then they'd try to make a decision in my absence, but then I'd have to go to the next hearing to prove that I only received the email less time. Do you know, if just trying every trick in the book to delay yeah. the... Uh, the hearing and again it's very frustrating to win that court case have that paperwork that says that my contact should be protected by law to then um have that very same paperwork go against me every time she breaches an order and it's incredibly hard uh, on wednesday uh, it was yesterday i waited all summer holiday to see my child yeah because um the police obviously they can't enforce the breach so i i knew that once she's in school the school have the power to um, with, with a court order to refuse her to hand her to the mother on the day that I'm supposed to be picking her up. Okay, wow. So I pre-arranged with the school. Um, that they, I asked them to let me leave early to avoid any conflict to the gate with the mother. They said mm -hmm. no. So I said, well, wow. the only other alternative here is that I'm going to have to bring the police with me to enforce the breach and it'll have to be a big scene in the playground in front of the whole school, mm -hmm. uh, which they didn't want. So they kind of agreed to it. We sat down, went through the court order. They said, no, you're completely right. But because she's kicking off, we're going to have to call the police and they're going to have to. Wow. So the police have come again. She's smashing the place up, making threats. Again, something that I would have 100% been arrested for on the spot. Oh, yeah, yeah. But um, they've come in to speak to me. Um, because of the, uh, the, initial, the last allegation of assault, um, the one that happened last month, they, um, she was trying to use that as an excuse of why the, the court order was not, would not be valid to the, uh, yesterday. So, oh, right. I, my bowel conditions clearly stated on the paperwork um, that the, uh, the, the, the terms and conditions of the contact were not to be interrupted. But as long as I had the mediator um, and I didn't pick her up at her address or I went to the school, that by law, they could not stop it. This is irrelevant though, this is irrelevant right now. How does, I don't get how when I, like, I've won a court case, I've got court order for this date, the bail condition state that it's not meant to be interfered with, yet I don't because get what's, what you're trying when to... I, when I say to the supervisor, it's because the, the current court order is from 2021. Doesn't matter what it is. It's valid forever, ain't it? Well, there's no expiry date it. Exactly. If, it's, if there's no expiry date, so why does it matter when the court when order came out? That? In the full things, because the court order should stay in place. Is that the full order? Yeah. Because that's only. We've pages. only got the child arrangements order. Well, she she couldn't give us that either. Yeah. Full, she said there's a, a full booklet. Yeah, the one, the, 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 the booklet really stating full booklet. what's. Her yeah. solicitor sent her, sent her, because she had the representation, so right. her solicitor's in charge of the bundle. So we sent it to him, and then because things weren't right, so we contacted the court. The court sent one, which was different to what her solicitor had sent. But they're both different to what was agreed. It's all grey. So he does need to go back to court and clarify. Yeah. Yeah. You do. Yeah. And, like, we are really sorry that What's we can't... Can I get the name so of the supervisor that's authorised this? 
Yeah, you can. give you the reference number. Yeah, we'll so, next reference Wednesday. Number. I'll bring her into school next Wednesday. Yeah, they're and just going to lose the point. They're just going to do the same thing again. No, because oh. that won't, you're back at the police on Tuesday and they should all yeah. be dropped on Tuesday because there's going to be no evidence. There is no, they've already like, stated well, that they're no, not allowed. No, I'm just saying, so, but, but, but Tuesday, by Tuesday, that, that won't be able to be a reason <laughs> that you can't have Lily next Wednesday. Yeah, she just won't bring her into school next Wednesday and you know that as well. Can I just so clarify, she, she does bring her to school. She's breached it about 74 times, 76 times. Next Wednesday. It depends on the outcome of... Yeah, if the outcome of the last allegation was like no further charges, no evidence has all been dropped, on a Wednesday... Well, well, yeah, we'd hope so, but we can't say for sure. I, I stood, what I can't get my head around is the fact that it states on the bail conditions that my contact is not... There's no difference. Yeah. That as long as... So why... Are you, I can't believe that you're... It, it seems to be... Yeah, it does seem this funny corrupt, because when they said these are your bowel conditions, yeah, so it doesn't say you can't see Lily until this is sorted. It says contact it should, should still stay. happen. Yeah, I we need a more up to date one with the, of this. And yeah, but yeah, you know that the bowel well. conditions that you gave him, they state that contact shouldn't be affected. Yeah, it's that's what he says. So I don't know why they're now saying yeah, because of the last allegation. Yeah, yeah, the one that you're saying it now says, is the reason why I can't see yeah, it. Yeah, it says it says wording. That um, contact um, won't be affected if you. So, yeah, that is to still. Yeah. And you just can't go. Yeah. Our, well, our but you're using the same. Our supervisor says if there's. Because it's a assault, the allegation against you. She assaulted me. Okay. I sent yeah. a video to the detective of but her throwing a car seat at me. It's an allegation. And me leaving. Obviously, it's an allegation at the moment, and it's still going. Like, yeah, being but it's an allegation. Yeah, there's yeah, another yeah. allegation where I've been guilty till proven innocent. And again, right now, I'm still. Do you get the officer's details? The Which one? one? You sent the video to. I've got an email address for her. Yeah, okay. Because you can but contact her. Right? hasn't been. Is a question that that nothing about anything, ever, ever, ever. You ever. find the police first to say. It so, no, all we can advise is you report it again and you give the reference number. Yeah, the bill is okay. This you lot will not do anything to solve this until either I kill myself or he hurts my daughter. Someone hurts my child or I kill myself, and then suddenly laws will start changing. This is a, this is what. Uh, what do you know how many dads have, have killed themselves over this sort of shit? Dads. I know, it's not fair. It's, it's not, not fair. fair. At the moment, how many times have right you now? got me up for At nothing? At the moment, it's only temporary. And hopefully, next week, it will be dropped if there's an if. It's not temporary. This is five years I've been going through this. I don't know how much more of this I can take. I know, and we are sorry. But there's only so much we can do. Yeah, so arrest me and let her go every time. That seems to be the protocol these days. I mean, I know you've got... You, you, you're, you, you, it's not yours. You've no, reported to... Fine. I know we all got bosses and we will have to, I appreciate that, but you can, no, I know you can see this. Your frustration this is, and we're, we're yeah. in the mid, do you know what I mean? We're trying to do the best for everyone. And this is, he's well. most upset because he's so worried about, I'm worried about his welfare. We're, we're all really worried about Lily's welfare and the longer it goes on without him seeing her, the more concerned. Yeah. And we're going to we put, put a report on when we go back to the station and, and it'll flag it to social services. services. Like, well social services. School. I've sent all this to social. They've not even done anything okay. about it. Well, hey, the, the social worker, yeah. the same one that works here, when I should, tried to tell her all the evidence of her mum's boyfriend, she said to me, word for word, it sounds like you're a jealous ex-boyfriend to me. And then start, started talking all chatty down the phone, using all slang and stuff like that. I thought, this is not the woman. Sense. The woman who's in charge of my daughter's yeah. safety, the social worker. Um, this is, I've done everything you can think of. I've done everything I've done. Are you estimating Lily up to that um, child yeah. in need? <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. That's why that's you, that's so it won't well, just be <laughs> be. It's not even this little child. Okay, listen. Now, a supervisor, after sitting for four hours talking to the police, a supervisor right. has called up and said, no, don't let them see her because of the court order, because it was an allegation of assault. Today, they've now sort of me up apologising and saying, yep, we've seen the evidence that I've sent in and it'll be no further action again. But again, it's it missed the opportunity to see my child yesterday. Mm -hmm. I'll have to wait until Wednesday again to try and pick her up again when the school can enforce it. But she'll, like, she'll most likely not allow her to go to school on that day. So if she's not at school, the school can't enforce it. Wow. So there's, there's even loopholes that she can it's do as well. all loopholes, but unfortunately my, my, my child is five years old now, which means she, would, she can le legally be prosecuted for not bringing her in. And last year wow. my daughter had a 40% attendance. Uh, and I went to every parent's evening myself. I went to regular meetings with the attendance officers, welfare officers. 
highlighting to them the issues at home and showing them why she's not been in school. You know, there was always, she's had a stomach ache or she had a cold. Whereas I know it'd been a fight with a boyfriend the night before, which has resulted in my daughter being woken up seven or eight times and not being able to make it. How do you feel about this level of exposure that your, your child is going through? Maybe? It's horrible. It's horrible because it's, it's, she's, she's, she shouldn't be going through it. She shouldn't be seeing it. And again, what I was, like I was saying earlier, um, it's all this, what she's watching with her parents, her mum and her, step, uh, and, um, her mum's boyfriend. Um, again, it, it's desensitising mm. th these sort of situations in her head. You know, she doesn't even flinch when something gets smashed in front of her or when oh, they wow. shower her. She doesn't even black batter her It's been normalised. It's yeah. been very normalised. Mm. And she's almost got to the point she's scared to tell me things that, um, that have happened out of fear of reprisals from the mother. Um, oh, right. Wow. You know, if I pick her up, she wants to tell me something's happened and she'll look around and go, can I tell you on the other road? You know, and when she tells me things, she asks me to not tell mummy. And it's horrible. But at the same time, I, I can't, if I start telling her mum things that she's asked me not to, yeah, she may not be, feel comfortable to tell me these things in future. No, that's true. Yeah, but when it's something that puts her in, that she's in danger. Where's the middle ground for this? Mm -hmm. um, it's it's very very hard. I'd say you're you're quite a difficult position uh, right now. How how do you deal with or how are you so mature? Because I mean, I, I know I'd be kicking and screaming or you I'm know kicking and screaming. <clears throat> the problem is, while well, she's trying to paint the narrative of me and being some violent, abusive ex partner, that's. Uh, battering her black and blue every single day. I if see, I yeah. now start kicking off, yeah. it kind of validates things that she, the lies that she said. I don't want for a second the judge to think, uh, to use one moment of, um, you know, it, it, was, it takes is one moment of losing your temper. It doesn't matter how good you've yeah. been your whole life. That would be, that would be your legacy. And no, I understand. refuse yeah. to allow it to, to come to that point. So at the end of the day, was I wanted to be a dad to my little girl. And if this is, if I got to bite my tongue, I bit my tongue for five years, so. Um, I can do another five if needs be. But, yeah. No, fair enough. So, so what I'm getting from this is that there's, you know, would you say there's quite a uh, injustice between men and women in the court system, and there and even a, the policing system as well. There is a hundred percent, hundred percent more so with the policing system. I feel than the legal system. All oh, right. Uh, in the, the court system, there are. Um, again, this is the kind of what I want looking to do long term with the publicity this is generating is to. You know, potentially get these laws changed, but again, what I'm saying, it's I'd hate for me to get laws loosened that potentially put my daughter in danger one day because she didn't have the same protection that women t tend to have now. So it's a fine That's line true. between protecting a man's rights and keeping uh, women safe. And I, this, I'm I'm struggling to work science out around it because I can imagine it's a, it's quite difficult to. So, how in your experience, how much does it take for a man to be arrested and for police to not even hear your side of things and just just put you in handcuffs if he breathes there's a potential <laughs> chance Jeez. i mean i've i've been sitting at home none the wiser not even been around or had any communication with her but she yeah. received a call from social services about an incident and assumed that i've been the one to put, put it through but yeah and then next thing oh. you know i'll have the police at my door and i've apparently gone around and punched her or something you know? Jeez. Um, the last incident that occurred was um believe it or not the police picked her up from her house, drove her to my house to remove my child, to then ask me to borrow a car seat to drive them all the way back home. Wow. Now, on the Wednesday, when I've uh, dropped her home after the contact, she's yeah. demanded I take the car seat, but I didn't have the car. So I've, I've said to her, I can't take it today. She's lost her temper and thrown this car seat at me and my daughter. Wow. And it was the same car seat that the police have dri driven all the way home. They've driven. A I've called the police myself to let them know that I've, she's assaulted us, um, that I've had my daughter, she's safe. I've tried to bring her back home as the, con as the, the, uh, the court all the states I needed to have her back for a certain time. I was letting her know my daughter was safe, that she was with me, that I was taking her to somewhere where she can be okay. Um, yeah. they, they didn't even question her. She Not even a word to her. They went straight to arrest me, raided 10 hours, she's looking for me. Um, everybody, everybody I knew that they were calling up, uh, yeah, and I handed myself in several days later and they kept me for about 23 hours, 22 and a half hours. Wow. And this was turning up with um, letters from judges saying she has a history of this, crime reports from the last 20 or so times that she's um, had, had been arrested on a false allegation. Um, every bit of evidence you can imagine, the court order, uh, time timelines of all the, the reports to social services in comparison to when her allegations come. 
I thought I, I thought it was a solid case where anybody can go like that and go, yeah. we apologise. Yeah. But again, the protocol states that they will, they will not arrest her, they will not question her, they will arrest me and lock me around in a cage like I'm an animal until they can get somebody that can be bothered to read through it. And yeah. it's a repeated, repeated cycle, this. No, no, I understand. Mm -hmm. um, so it's literally tattletale as soon as she says something. So yeah. when, when the shoe's on another foot and then you, you've called the police about her, no, nothing's really no, nothing, occurred? Nothing's nothing. ever, ever happened. Wow. Nothing's ever happened. I've never even questioned her. So do you feel women are protected under, under law? I, I mean, I know women well, should be I mean, be I feel like in these sort of scenarios, they're more vulnerable and they're more likely yeah. to fall victim to this sort of stuff. So I feel like they need to be. But again, okay. I think common sense needs to be put into play. And yeah. when, there's, when there's a repeated cycle and it's a clear cycle and an obvious one, you've got to start saying that, I know the protocol says this, but we can clearly see that mm. there needs to be a sort of middle ground. No, I agree. I agree. I know you said you represented yourself at court. Uh, do, you, do you feel like things would have been different if you, if you actually had a lawyer as well? Yeah, I'd probably have been about 10 grand lighter. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, fair um, enough. But, yeah. And I feel like it may have taken a little bit longer. The problem yeah. is with these, um, with these family law lawyers, they're paid by the hearing and by the hour rather mm. than by the case. So it's not in their interest to solve it as quickly as possible. Yeah. And that was one of my main reasons for trying to tackle this myself. But again, with a combination of COVID and, um, you know, not having an understanding of how the legal system works, you know, it ended up dragging on for two whole years. But I learned enough that it kind of gave me the best chance that one of the risks were, was her moving. She attempted to move to South End. So I looked into how oh. to get a prohibited steps order so she couldn't move within a certain distance because that would have been... That'd have been very hard to continue. The, the, I would have obviously made it work, but it would have been very difficult traveling to there and back every single week yeah. and every other day. Um, I managed to set, yeah, yeah, it was previous steps all we had to set up first. We set the interim order, which was the temporary supervised access, because I wanted, I, it was important that I still maintain the relationship with her while we waited for this to happen. Yeah. Um, and eventually, after 20 or so different hearings and a lot of messing about, I got the, um, I won the case um, and I got, the, um, I got the, the access that I wanted, which I asked for, it was granted. Brilliant. But unfortunately, when the paperwork came, it wasn't what was agreed in court. Wow. So again, it was, with that plus the fact that we didn't contain the child arrange, uh, power of arrest or power of warning attached, it's got me thinking, was the court papers fraudulent? No. It's very hard getting to the bottom of these things, and I, I don't doubt for a second if I had had a solicitor, they would have spotted that at the at the start, and I wouldn't probably wouldn't be doing this right now. So no, I understand. Talk, talking about that, then, um, how is it that she's, or why is it that the, the woman in the situation would be entitled to legal aid, but the man wouldn't be? Um, again, I think it might come down to vulnerability. But yeah, is it, is it a certain criteria you have to? You have well, to kind of meet to get It's to get just that. more if there's an allegation of violence. It doesn't even have to be proven. Just if there's an allegation of it. I see. And again, it should have been clearly obvious that what, if it was one day after I've applied for access that this restraining order has been taken out, it's a bit coincidental. And yeah. again, I feel like that should have been thrown out instantly in the first hearing. But again, I had to wait two years for that to get thrown out. And then mm. the access case took a day. So... So... In your experience of things, would you say, you know, the woman can kind of take control, manipulate the situation? Yeah. 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 Although I don't feel like she had the intelligence to manipulate the situation. Mm. There was a lot of coercion from her solicitors. Yeah. Um, obviously, they're government funded, so it was in no, um, it was in no interest of theirs to, to hurry the case up. They was happy to keep prolonging it and getting paid by the hour. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. I'm sure it's good for you to, to get off your chest as well. Yeah, 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 it does. Yeah. It does help. I mean, I get a lot of messages on Facebook and people going, "You want to talk?" But All right. it's it's quite. <laughs> you know, again, I feel like sometimes I'm repeating myself to people. People are asking, "Is there anything I can do?" And it's like, I appreciate you being there, but it's, it's genuinely there's nothing like. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, just, it's just support, isn't it? Yeah, it's just yeah. support. Yeah. Which is which is helpful, but it's yeah. You can't really help the situation yeah. in hand sometimes. I mean, I get a lot of messages from dads asking for advice of how to. Oh, know, right. Because uh, there's, this happens a lot, and I've helped a lot of people get get their court cases up and running, get people on the right track. People that didn't know to, you know, was was having court proceedings, waiting several months between hearings, and having no right. concept with their child. So I taught them how to apply for interim orders, and you know, just get just basically uh, little steps that they can take to make sure make sure the people, judges know that they're committed to seeing their child, you know, that that they are doing something, and ensuring that the contact stays stays mm. happening. Um, 
Some people have won their cases since. And this is why the wow. most frustrating thing is because I'm coaching people on how to win their cases. On, and I've won a case that's not even a win. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, just, yeah. it's hard, obviously, because you're, you're living it. But it's, sometimes it's, uh, it's a learning curve as well because obviously you can go back and tell other people, you know, make sure you do this and make yeah. sure you do that, yeah. which, which helps other people quite a lot. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But one frustrating thing for me is I get but the majority of the messages I get asking for help are not from the dads themselves. Yeah. From the dad's new girlfriend that wants them to have a relationship with her, all right. And you know, and it was, and it, it made it like, and I will always help anyone. Yeah, like yeah. it makes me sick. It makes me sick. You think <laughs> all you had to do was be a dad? You know, you got part of your your, your kid's mother's begging you to be there. Like, yeah. And, and here I'm having to do to do over a thousand hours in cells and wrong for arrest every other week and being ma made out to be every few. God, some of the accusations that came out. That's, that's what I'm, I'm looking at you and you seem, you know, very mature about it. You're very, like, relaxed. I know, I know you said that, but I mean, it's, it's you know, good, good for you because, honestly, that's a, that's a hard situation to, to, to not just kind of go crazy sometimes. It's just more, it's counterproductive. Yeah, like, no, I'm saying. This, and there's, there's times I've been at home, like, and, and I've, I've, I've wanted to smash me fucking death up. I've, <laughs> I've been so angry, like, she drives yeah. me mad. You know, there's times I've left her house and like, I'm trying to say bye to my daughter, but because she's got the ump, she's, nope, you're not saying bye to her. She's crying on the other side of the door. Oh, wow, yeah. But it breaks your heart, you know, yeah. it breaks your heart. And, you know, you just want to kick that door down and take her up and leave, you know. But, I can imagine, yeah. yeah. But again, you got to do it the right way, and you're, otherwise you're always going to be doing it. Yeah. But, how, how old were you when you had... Um, I was 24. Is, is it just one, one child you have? One. Yeah. I, I don't know, again, and I'd love to have <laughs> another child, but it's... Yeah. I couldn't do all this again. Oh, fair enough. I couldn't yeah. do all this again. And then again, I'm pretty sure I'd pick a better partner next time because I've been single since before she was born. Wow. You know? But yeah, I don't feel like I could. Uh, I mean, I know he's got. But I'm, I could not do it. I could not do it. I could not do it. <laughs> it's it's hard because obviously you you know you have you have a child and a mm. daughter. Yeah, yeah, you have a daughter, girl. and. You know, I know you can't do things differently, um, but if you could, um, is it, or would you, what advice would you give to someone then? Who, who wanted children? Who wanted children or yeah. has children? Who, who wants children? Make sure that you are the sort of person that you want your kid to look up to. And if you haven't, people don't start thinking about it usually until they get somebody pregnant, mm. you know. And I feel like if people got into every relationship thinking, well, I want this to be the mother or father of my child. Yeah. You know, I feel, but then again, it's, it's, it doesn't always work out. Like people don't think, you, you, you know, if you, if you start getting in relationships on the day one, you're thinking about kids and that is, you, you, you're not doing the right thing. Like you need to get to know people before them sort of thoughts even get in your head. And then yeah. once you end up liking someone, sometimes you're blind to, to certain traits, aren't you? you know? And it's hard to tell people that haven't got kids, it's hard to tell how they will be when they do, because your whole life has to change. Like you can't just be, and this is the problem with a lot of dads, they think that it, it's like their baby mum's had a kid. Mm. It's not like they've had a kid, you know, like when, when the, the kid gets hurt, the kid, the kid ain't got food or kid, they ain't got money. They just, they don't, it was back of their mind, they're not going to think about it. Right. You know, they'll just pretend that, you know, uh, one of the common things I, I've noticed is when, when a woman may stop the father from seeing um, the child, they will instantly resort to, I'm not going to pay, I'm not going to pay more. And again, this is kind of what went in my favour for the court case because I still paid her every week, way more than she wow. was legally entitled to. But the point I was making was, why would I deprive my child of stuff to spite, just to spite her mother? Yeah. And if she isn't getting to see her dad, I want her to have this, some little luxuries that she was familiar with, you know, her Netflix, her ice creams when she goes out and things. I wouldn't want to do anything that not only she can't see her dad, but now she ain't got clothes that fit her and now she can't have the food and treats that she likes. It just, it, again, it's counterproductive. It just doesn't make any sense. And it only it looks like to a judge that you ain't, that you ain't bothered about your child, you know. As mm. soon as you start making it about the, uh, the mother, you've already lost. You know? yeah. It's got to be irrelevant. Your kid should be taken care of regardless of whether the mother's being horrible to you or not. And I feel like this is where a lot of people go wrong. So where, where did you kind of find out how to be a dad, how to be a good dad? <laughs> Again, this is a tricky one because I lost <laughs> my father from very young. So, yeah. and it, 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 well, I won't go into the circumstances, but it weren't the best. I learned how to be a good dad and I learned what I shouldn't do. 
Okay. And again, it's like they say there's, you know, there's a saying, they say you'll have two brothers and the dad's an alcoholic. And one of the brothers, he's an alcoholic and he says, well, it's because I watch my dad drink every day. Mm. And the other brother says, I don't drink because I watch what it do to my dad. And it's all about what you take from your situation. Do you want it to be a, a reason why you, that you don't, uh, don't mess up your, the next generation or an excuse why you did? Yeah. 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 And I want to be a, there to be a reason why the cycle's broken, not why an excuse why it continued. So. That's, that's quite powerful. That's good, yeah. I think that's, that's very good advice to give to, to anyone who's in that situation, mm. definitely.